Hello there, my name's Ray, I'm with Team Steam, and today I'm out in the garden because I'm going to show you how to make your own 100% organic, high quality, completely free fertilizer for your garden. Now I'm going to show you how to make this fertilizer in small batches and in large batches. Then I'm going to show you how to disperse the small batches and also the large batches when they're ready. Now this fertilizer, once it's completely fermented and completely ready for use, is going to be very potent. You're going to have to mix it about 10 to 1 to put it on your garden without burning anything. That's how potent and, and high quality of fertilizer this is gonna be. No additives other than all natural ingredients, but once it's done fermenting, you're gonna wanna dilute it 10 to one. So you need to keep that in mind when you're deciding exactly how much fertilizer you wish to make in your original batch. What I've got here is a 30 gallon plastic trash can. Uh, you wanna get something that's in decent shape, it's got no cracks or holes in it. And I've got a five gallon bucket. This used to have drywall mud in it. It's clean enough now. And uh, these are the two containers I'm gonna use to show you the two different ways of making two different size batches. So I'm gonna start by taking this five gallon bucket and showing you exactly how to make five gallons of high quality fertilizer that you can turn into 50 gallons of diluted proper ready to use fertilizer. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is gather up the material that's gonna go in the fertilizer. And what that material is going to be is anything green that you can spare on your property. Weeds, grass clippings, leaves of any sort, leaf litter, um, and, and it doesn't have to be green. In fact, the more brown it is, the further along it is. You, you're kind of getting a jump start on making your fertilizer by, by taking partially decomposed green material and putting it in there. So you're gonna to wanna to gather up as much greenery as you can, keeping in mind that some of these greens, like certain vines and certain uh, plants, are far more aggressive than others. And it's actually pretty wise to use some of those aggressive plants because some of those aggressive attributes will be put right into the fertilizer and dispersed back onto your, your garden or your yard or wherever you're putting it. So before you get started, you might want to go around your property or your neighbor's property or your friend's property or your parents place or wherever you can go to pull weeds or cut weeds and get those cut uh cut their cut their grass for them cut your own grass save the clippings think about where you can gather up some of this green material and the less woody stems you throw in there the better because woody stems they really don't break down very well so if it's a green plant with a green stem a fibrous stem but not woody that's gonna be your best bet. If it's a woody stem, try and just take the leaves off of it. Be sure and wear gloves if you're gonna be pulling a bunch of weeds because you might run into stuff with uh, thorns and some of these thorns are very, very fine, almost like hairs. And you don't realize until it's too late that your palm and your hand and your arms are now full of these thorns that are gonna bother you for days and days, may even embed in your skin. Now, some of the more aggressive um, prolific plants on my property are motherwort, comfrey. There's some of these plants that just grow like weeds and those are good ones to take from. And if you can take select leaves off of comfrey and select uh, motherwort plants, they can continue to grow and continue to produce green that you can take from all summer long. And here's a pretty good example of an aggressive thorn covered weed that uh, you know a person could use. This, this wasn't even in this location a couple of weeks ago and here it is, it's about almost two feet tall. Now I've uprooted the entire thing, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in my bucket. And here's some more weeds, just typical little weeds bucket's about uh, a third full already you know when you're taken from plants that you intend to leave alive the best place to start is at the very bottom of the plant there's always going to be leaves that are touching the ground that are already yellowed they're already bug damaged that's a good place to start start there and then start randomly taking leaves that are damaged or have basically seen their entire life already you, you want to start with those and by the time you're done you will have taken about a third of the plant and it's a third of the plant it could spare and the plant can continue to grow like this right here, you can see damaged leaves. That's a good example of a leaf that is long past its time. And it's already decomposing, so we're already a step ahead. Some of these other leaves down here, they're all wilted and folded up and bug damaged. Another one right here, see how damaged that one is? And you wanna start at the bottom and you wanna work your way around. Comfrey or any other plant that you intend on leaving alive. And you can see these particular comfrey plants are just getting ready to bloom. 
you don't really want to pull those blooms off at the end because these blooms attract a lot of different pollinators bees love them so as long as you want to keep the pollinators uh traveling through your garden and uh hanging out you're going to want to leave these sorts of blooms so you don't want to pull those you just want to pull some of the damaged or uh or decaying or uh leaves that you think it can spare rhubarb there's another good example there's always huge leaves on the bottom that have seen their entire lifespan you, if you're if you're going to save all your stalks and save your stalks and just pull the leaf but this leaf can definitely go in with the rest another good example of a damaged leaf that's seen its entire lifespan another good example this one brought the whole stalk with it i'll separate the stalk but see here's a comfrey leaf that's not doing any good to anybody and it's already partially decomposed all right so now i've pulled all the weeds i need to pull and thinned out all the plants i feel like thinning out and gathered up all of the foliage that i can gather up to fill this bucket and the next step is to make sure that the bucket is packed you don't want to loosely fill it you want to be able to pack it more than three quarters full you want it almost all the way full and then you want the water level actually above the plants you don't want a bunch of plants poking up out of the water floating to the top so a lot of times it's best to get a flat rock or something that you can set on this to weigh it down to get your plants down under the level of the water but you want your plants almost all the way to the top now it's topped off all the way now i've got a decent flat rock we'll put that on top of there you're going to want to put a lid on it that can snap down or a board across it that fits fairly tight and a rock on top of the board you're going to want to get some way to seal this up pretty well the reasons you absolutely need to cover it up preferably with a lid that actually snaps on is for evaporation also if the container gets tipped over you want to try and prevent from spilling your stuff everywhere but but mostly it's because of the absolutely atrocious smell that is going to grow within this bucket over the next few weeks and that's mainly because fully organic fertilizer that's been derived from fermenting plants and is completely ready for use smells like a porta potty that has been at a music festival in 115 degree weather for two months straight okay so now that we've got that bucket full you're going to want to leave that sit outside for at least two weeks in the sun preferably and when it's all ready to go i'll give you an idea what it's going to look like this has been sitting outside for the proper amount of time as you can see there's almost no organic material in it almost all of it 90 plus percent of it is completely broken down a few of the stems maybe a couple leaves but mostly just some of the uh, uh, slower to break down stems is all that remains and it is murky and it is the worst smelling stuff that you'll probably ever smell it smells like a sewage plant this is a 30 gallon uh, trash can so that means that it's going to make 300 gallons of fertilizer when it's all said and done so what i've done is i've taken a three gallon bucket filled it to the top out of this trash can and i have screened it and filtered it through a fairly coarse screen into another 30 gallon trash can and i'll show you that process so here's my three gallon bucket and it measures exactly three gallons up the side you can read right where it says it and i filled it to the top brought it over here and dumped it into this 30 gallon trash can that's closer to where we actually want to do our watering then i took this piece of coarse screen it's actually a bug screen off the front of a uh, semi and I laid it across this and I dumped that liquid through it so it would filter out elements like that. So those elements aren't getting caught up in my water pump. And the reason that I have mixed it up in such a large amount is because I've taken a small, somewhat portable, I mean, you still have to plug it into AC power, but it's a portable water pump and I'll show you what I mean. Water pump, just like this one. And I've hooked my garden hose up to it. It's a 100 foot hose. And I haven't plugged it in yet. And then I'm going to take this water pump and drop it down in here. Now that I've filtered this water, I'm not going to be plugging up my water pump or my spray nozzle, either one. Now it's at the very bottom. It's sitting flat in this now diluted. This is three gallons that's been turned into 30 gallons. So this is fully ready to go. Hooked up to a 100 foot garden hose. Then I took a plastic spray nozzle, just an old plastic one that we've had around for quite a while, and I drilled out about a third of the holes considerably larger than they ever were to start with. You can see that top row and that bottom row have holes. Every other hole has been drilled out considerably larger. You can see, look at the color of that coming out of there. And then once you've watered down um, all the vegetation that you think needs fertilized, you can go ahead and 
start cleaning up all of your equipment. Rinse off your water pump, run some clean water through your water hose, save that particular sprayer for the next time that you're gonna do this process because it's not gonna be all that all that good for watering in the future. I mean, it's not like it's contaminated, but those big holes make it to where it lets out a lot more water, but a lot less spray. So it's not spraying out nearly as far. It's You've kind of made it useless for normal watering purposes, but you've made it useful for that kind of thicker, um, fertilized liquid and so if you're watering or fertilizing on a larger scale like that you're it, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and invest in a little water pump like that they're 20 30 bucks or something they don't they don't cost all that much and then once you have one you can use it for years and years and years for this purpose if you're going on a scale this large now if you're going to go on a scale that's much smaller i'll show you how to do that what you're going to want to do is get some sort of measuring cup and you don't have to use the measuring cups in your kitchen for such a kind of off-putting sort of detail. You can go down to your local hardware store and buy just a single paint mixing cup. And every paint mixing cup will have on the side a scale of ounces. And all you need to do is consider that there's 128 ounces in a gallon. And if you forget that, just look it up. Google it, you'll know in two seconds. It's 128 ounces in a gallon. So if we're mixing this 10 to one, that means that 12 ounces of your concentrated fertilizer is going to be 120 ounces of fluid. So basically 12 ounces of your concentrated fertilizer is roughly a gallon of ready to spray fertilizer. Now what I have here is my five gallon bucket of uh, concentrated fertilizer, my paint mixing cup, and a two gallon watering can. Now, if it's 128 ounces in a gallon, that means it's 256 ounces in two gallons. So I'm gonna round that back to 240 because it's easy to do. And now we just know that we need to come up with 24 ounces of liquid. So if we take our mixing cup, dip it into our fertilizer, and come up with 24 ounces, between 24 and 26, won't hurt a single thing. Dump it into your two gallon watering can first. Don't dump it into the water, dump it in there first. So when you put your garden hose down in there and fill it up, it's mixing it up as you're filling it. So it's by the time it's full, it's also completely mixed up. So again, you'll take your paint mixing cup, fill it up to 24 ounces, 26 doesn't hurt a thing. Dump it into your two gallon, uh, watering can and then put your garden hose down in your watering can and fill it up let it swirl around let it get completely full and then once it's filled up nearly to the top three quarters of the way or higher then you know you're ready to take it and lay it out on the uh, on the garden and if you want to use an old kitchen strainer or a piece of screen or something like that to uh, to filter it before it gets into your watering can you can do that and another thing you can do if you don't mind spending a few dollars, I mean, this, this can be done completely for free and it'll work every single time. But if you wanna spend a few dollars, get yourself a container. We did a whole gallon, but get yourself a container of uh, black strap molasses. That's some good natural sugars that that sort of bacteria loves feeding on. So if you want your bacteria to break your material down even faster and become more prolific and more aggressive, go ahead and put just a glug or two of blackstrap molasses in your 30 gallon container or you know a couple tablespoons in your five gallon container and that'll really help things along. So now that fertilizer that you just made yourself in your own yard from yard scraps basically is as high quality as about anything you can go and buy. The only difference is it's completely organic, completely safe, and completely free. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button because that's going to help me grow my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this or domestic auto body or truck auto body or art or any of the things we do around here, you might as well go ahead and subscribe because, you know, we always got something going on. We'll see you guys around.